Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to take a quick look at how to use VeraCrypt to encrypt any files that you want to encrypt. So I've actually quickly created five blank files on the desktop. You know, right click, new, and you create a new file. Just created five blank files. We've got a PowerPoint presentation, a text file, rich text document, Word document, and a BMP, a bitmap image. And so, first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is install VeraCrypt. Now what I'll do is I'll put a link in the description, but if you're using a search engine, just start, uh, do a quick search for VeraCrypt, and this will be the URL, this one here. So I will put this link in the description, and obviously you'd click on downloads, and you'd download, you know, depending on what operating system you're using, more than likely you're using Windows, and obviously this one here looks pretty good. You've got an installer for Windows 8 or later. That sounds pretty much what you need, assuming you've got Windows 8 or later. So let me close that. So we wanna go ahead and add these files to an encrypted volume. So what we do, I'm gonna click on Start, and I'm gonna type VeraCrypt, and as you can see the app, has popped up. Obviously, if you want to add it to your start menu, you can pin it if you like. So let's go ahead and click on this. Now, what you're going to want to do is you're going to you're going to want to create a volume. So click on create volume. And at this point, we've got three different options. Today, we're going to be looking at the first option, which is create an encrypted file container. But just so you are aware, you can also encrypt a non system drive so typically this is going to be like um, maybe a USB drive or if you've got a number of drives installed on your operating system it might be another system a non-system drive so not where Windows is installed so typically Windows will be installed on the C drive so say for example you've got a D or an E or an F drive you can go ahead and use this option to encrypt that drive and the last option, the third one here, is encrypt the system partition or entire system drive. So, of course, this would be your uh, C drive, probably, or the drive that you've got Windows installed. So, I'm not going to delve too much into these options, but if all you want to do is encrypt a bunch of files that you have, then you're going to want the first option. The good the good thing about the first option is actually the encryption and the decryption is going to be quicker because you're creating a smaller volume that's just big enough to store all of the files you want to put in there. And likewise, the good thing about this is that you can go ahead and easily copy this container, this encrypted file container, to you know multiple USB sticks. You can have a backup of it, that type of thing. As whereas, obviously, if you're encrypting an entire drive, that's gonna be a lot slower because you've then got to encrypt and decrypt the entire drive every time you wanna either add a file or look at a file or et cetera, et cetera. So without any further ado, let's click on create an encrypted file container and we are gonna click on next. Now at this point, we've got two options. We're gonna go with the first option. Now the first option is just a standard VeraCrypt volume, which means you're gonna create a, a volume. We know essentially we're gonna create a file uh, which is which contains a volume that you can put files in just like a normal usb drive you know any other drive that type of thing well at least it will appear like a drive once you've mounted it if any of these terms don't make a lot of sense don't worry we'll get to it and it'll all be explanatory self-explanatory once we've taken a closer look the other one is a hidden veracrypt volume and it says it may happen that you are forced by someone to reveal the password to an encrypted volume there are many situations where you cannot refuse to reveal the password, for example, due to extortion. Using a so-called hidden volume allows you to solve such situations without revealing the password for your volume. So essentially, and I haven't used this before, but from what I understand, you can go ahead and provide two passwords. So if you're forced to reveal your password, what it'll do is it'll show one volume and then you can use another password to access the hidden volume. So um, there's essentially two volumes there. 
and you'd use two different passwords one to access the public volume and one to access the private volume so if you're forced to reveal the password you can go ahead and give the password for the you know the public it's not really public but you know the public version and likewise the files that you've kept on the private volume will remain well secret i suppose but in this example we're going to go ahead and click on standard veracrypt volume next at this point you need to provide a location for a file. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna click on select file and I'm gonna click on desktop and I'm just gonna click on, uh, I'm gonna call it Vera. Um, and I'm just trying to remember, I think the extension is .hc, I'm almost certain. So if you basically give the file an extension of .hc, what that will do is that will automatically open up in Veracrypt when you double click on it. You might want that, you might not want that, but that's what I like to do just to make my life a little bit easier. So let's go ahead and click save. So at this point we can click next and this is where you get to uh, choose the encryption algorithm. We've got a whole bunch there uh, and the hashing algorithm. I'm not gonna dwell on these too much. I'm just gonna say that for me personally, I'm just gonna leave it as AES and SHA512. If you wanna learn more about hashing algorithms, you know, information on hashing algorithms there. And if you wanna learn more about this uh, encryption algorithm, you can click on this link as well but um, it's absolutely fine to use the default. There's not a problem with that whatsoever. What's going to be key is not so much the algorithm that you use, it's actually gonna be the length of your password. So it's always best to use a long password, especially when you're trying to encrypt something or when you're encrypting something. So let's click next. So at this point, we've got some free space on the C drive and we have to specify how big we want our container to be. Because these are empty files, I'm literally just going to say one megabyte and I'm going to click next. Now this is important, this is where you create a password. So let's have a look what it has to say. The maximum length of the password is 64 characters, so, uh, so pretty crazy, right? Let's go ahead and go to last pass and then type in generator. Now, of course, you don't you don't need to do it this way. This is just how I like to do it because LastPass has a generator. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the maximum, which I already know is 50. Let's see if we can go higher. We can't go any higher, but 50 is fine. We're not quite maxing out the password limit here, which is 64. But you know what? Let's be honest about it. 50 is absolutely fine. We want uppercase, lowercase, numbers and symbols, right? Now I'm going to hit refresh a couple of times just because it's fun and then I'm going to click on copy password okay now if you want to use LastPass I'm not going to give a review of that just yet but it is a great password manager and I can certainly recommend it so let's let's take a look at that password shall we let's go into notepad let's paste it in and let's zoom in so as you can see we've got a huge password there and it's 50 characters long so we're going to use this I'm not quite maxing out the full the full uh, length of the password but it doesn't doesn't really matter let's be honest about it most people don't have a password a that looks like this and b that's that long so i think we're going to be just fine so let's just uh, i'm just going to select this and copy it well actually it was already on the already on the clipboard anyway but let's paste it in there paste it in there now use a key file i'm going to jump over these settings because they're probably not too important for most people but if you use a key file let's see if it says anything it doesn't say anything there but essentially what that means is you can go ahead and have a, uh, a file somewhere on your hard drive and you can actually use the file uh, to actually open the volume so um, I'd recommend if you want to know more about um, these things here I'd recommend that you go ahead and uh, read up online because if you go online you can read all about these but obviously that just displays the password and um, use PIM you know what I've actually completely forgotten what uh, use PIM is so let me just type that in quickly Vera crypt use PIM 
I'm not sure what that is. It's been a while. Is uh, unnecessary if you are sufficiently strong password. Well, there you go. It says VeraCrypt's PIM is unnecessary if you use a sufficient, sufficiently, if I can say it, strong password. What is it anyway? In layman's terms, it denies the number of times your password is hashed before. Oh, okay. Yeah, it rings a bell now. So in layman's terms, VeraCrypt's PIM defines the number of times your password is hashed before being used to decrypt the disk. So long story short, for most people, you're probably not going to need to use that actually. And just make sure you've got a long password. Okay. So next. Okay. So here, this is quite interesting. It wants you to move your mouse because what it's going to do, I'll just read it from here actually. Move your mouse as randomly as possible within this window. The longer you move it, the better. This significantly increases the cryptographic strength of the encryption keys. Then click format to create the volume so it's just basically randomly picking up mouse movements and using that to uh, encrypt your file basically oh and here of course you've got you can select you know the file system and the uh, cluster so I, I think fat's probably the best one to go for because it's most universally accepted you know you can use fat on um, macbooks or windows or etc etc Although EX fat is, is pretty good as well. It's a slightly more modern version of fat, but going into any more details is probably outside the scope of this video. So let's click on format. This should not take very long. Here we go. The, Vera, the VeraCrypt volume has been successfully created. All right, we're done. I'm gonna click exit and I'm also gonna click exit again. Now, luckily I did remember the extension correctly, .hc, if you double click on it, excellent, it opens VeraCrypt directly. Probably not quite as secure because obviously if somebody sees that file and they're not sure what .hc is, they're just gonna double click on it and it's gonna open VeraCrypt. So probably not the safest way to store uh, an encrypted uh, volume, okay? But this is just a demonstration. You might choose to go ahead, I don't know, and call it something else you know, dot .bmp or I don't know, something else, something um, discreet. But this is just a demo, so if you double click on it, it opens in VeraCrypt. Now what we wanna do, we wanna click on mount. And before we mount, we have to set to drive. So if none of this makes any sense to you, essentially what we've got is we've got an encrypted volume here, file container, and we have to mount it. And what that basically means is it just means that we're gonna mount this container to a drive layer. So essentially, once it's mounted, you're just gonna be able to use it like you would use any other drive. It's a little bit, in a way, mounting this file container is a little bit like plugging a USB stick into a PC. So just think of it like that. You're plugging a USB stick into a PC and it comes up in Windows so that you can go ahead and access the files. Very similar concept. So let's just start again. Double click on the file. So let's, um, I always like to go with the last one, Z. Click mount. Ah, oh, and of course we need the password because it wouldn't be very good without a password, would it? So make sure you've got your password handy. I would thoroughly recommend using a password manager. And that's all I'm gonna say right now because I don't think you are gonna be able to remember a password like that. And if you can, well, you're probably a better man than I am. So let's paste that password in and click on OK. And because it's a small little file container, it shouldn't take too long to decrypt. Obviously, the uh, the larger the uh, file container, lo the longer it's going to take to decrypt. And obviously, there's different factors involved with regards to encrypting system drives with hardware, you know, encryption and, and, and the rest of it. But that's that's definitely outside the scope of this video. So we'll talk about that another time. So let's go to this PC. And because we mounted it, here we go. We've got it here, local Z drive. Now. As you can see, we've not got the full one megabyte, but you never get the full one megabyte. You never get exactly what you've created because obviously some of that goes into the organization of the file system, etc., etc. So let's double click on it. It's empty. What we're gonna do is we are gonna grab those files, throw them in there. And I'm actually at the same time, I'm gonna delete the original files. They're now gone. Uh, and I'm gonna close that. Now, what I need to do when I'm finished is I need to click on it and click on dismount. So let's have a look. I'm going to empty the recycle bin. So the recycle bin's gone. We've got our encrypted file container there, but we don't have the files. So of course, if we want to get access to those files, we double click on the, uh, the file container. We click on mount. 
we need to put in a password. Let me just show you what happens if we put in a password that's wrong. It's going to say, you are wrong. Do not pass go. Let's give it a little bit of time. It is a long password after all. As you can see, it comes up with a message. Operation failed due to the following, one of the following reasons. Okay. So let's go ahead and actually enter the right password. This huge password here. Paste it in. Click on OK. Give it 10 seconds. I think it's only fair. And we have it, and it's mounted to Z Drive. So if we go back to my computer, as you can see, Z Drive, and look at that. Lo and behold, there are our files. They have been decrypted because we gave it the uh, we gave it the private key. We gave it the uh, the password. And if obviously you want to access those files, you can. Let's have a let's have a look at this. Let's um, edit this picture in. Let's go to uh, open with paint and obviously we can go ahead and draw some shapes in here close it save it ah interesting so because obviously um, I created such a small volume uh, I don't have any room to save it how great is that so yeah bear that in mind when you're creating a volume you're gonna want to leave a little bit a little bit of room potentially if you're gonna be editing those files just for expansion but just to prove a point I'm just gonna put test in the text file because that will take up hardly any room a BMP obviously is quite a large file type potentially let me save and as you can see if we double click on it it's going to keep the data if I close that and dismount let's just prove that actually it did save that data mount let's put in that password again probably still have, still have it on the clipboard click OK now obviously it's going to um, decrypt our, our volume Okay, let's go to Windows again, this PC. Uh, there we go, and as you can see, it's saved. And, and obviously, if you want to, you can just use this like a USB drive, any other drive. You can go ahead, you can copy the files, paste them on the desktop. If you really wanted to, you can go ahead and delete one of the files. You can literally just use it like a normal, um, like a normal USB volume, you know, normal USB drive, do what you like. Uh, always remember though that obviously if you've encrypted your files you've obviously encrypted them for a reason because they're for whatever reason private so therefore just remember if you're leaving the room don't go leaving this drive open you're going to want to make sure that you dismount it once it's dismounted obviously no one can access it without the password uh, and don't go ahead and leave all of the files on the desktop because that kind of defeats the point of encrypting the files in the first point in the first place anyway with that said, I hope that helps somebody. If it did help, don't forget to like the video. And if you want to see similar content, content to this in the future, go ahead and consider subscribing because you won't want to miss new videos. And until next time, take care.